Do I really have to say something about Jeff and Damien? Okay. I think it's essentially boys art. Boys are always looking for what they can come up with and get away with. Especially clever boys. Clever boys are always in love with gimmicks. And so Jeff and Damien have come up with a whole bunch of gimmicks. They impress you the first time you see them. The second time you see them, there is nothing new to be discovered anymore. But we all do love clever boys, don't we? Ah, Marcel, illegitimate father to Andy, Jeff and Damien. How could I not love his brie, his wit, being the first in those days, under those circumstances? He has done what has to be done every once in a while in a field that takes itself very seriously. But, yes there is a but, these things are always paradoxical. Because however you may love what he himself has done, you cannot deny that he has opened the box of Pandora from which an ocean of mediocrity has flooded into the arts. And it is especially in this that his influence has been bigger than Picasso's. Mad art is a great danger to the contemporary arts, no matter how innocent it may look. It sets a whole new standard for what is great and what is not. A lot of art that was only just on the edge of being brilliant is pushed back by meta art to where we find sheer mediocrity. Even the grand art of people like Picasso is pushed away from its place on the top of the Art Olympus. Meta art entirely stands on its own there. But that has been the danger always present in the arts. When the young Michelangelo came into the light, when the young Picasso came into the light, art is a dangerous pastime. The great artists do not take prisoners. The swamps the Romans didn't want. I'm not at all a nationalist, but every once in a while I can't help asking myself if it is mere coincidence that four or five of the top ten greatest artists of all time have come from these former swamps. And now there is Marian and the meta art as well. Incredible, isn't it? There will be hardly any 20th and 21st century artist of any importance who has not been or is still secretly afraid of the force of nature called Picasso. And are all artificial times the sheer power of the natural gesture in his genius art is still burning our retina? And we know it, but we have to move on with our own limited capacities. Picasso is just as stimulating as he is discouraging. What Picasso didn't give us is great depth. And I guess that's why Marianne Schuyld always loved him, but never has been afraid of him. She knew, even when meta art was still to be found, that there was something beyond Picasso. All other artists acting next to Picasso. It took meta art to take the inescapable power of naturalness into profundity. Life absolutely fascinates me, but pieces of real life taken into art always bore me to death. No matter if it is a giant shark or a car wreck, I find art the most intriguing, breathtaking in some cases, when it is all artificial. When art is all artificial, it is all magical. And no art form is more magical than the art of painting in which an artist creates a whole world and beyond from nothing but a little bit of colored mud. And this whole, all artificial world sometimes tells us more about real life than real life itself. Isn't that magical? Art is transcendent. Of course, but there wouldn't be art if there were no artists. 
still sometimes I think it would be good for the arts if the medieval situation would return for a while in which the artists almost always stayed anonymous. For a while now there are shiploads of more or less creative people who definitely want to become artists while the first thing an artist must want is to create great art. The medieval situation does in no way fit our lifestyle anymore and so we are stuck in this cult of the artist hero from which unbelievable poor art floods the art world. You see, great art always transcends the personal interests of the artist. Don't ask me how this is possible, but that's the way it is. Do I really have to speak about this? Well, first of all, I'm the husband of the woman. I'm nothing of the matter artist. The matter artist is alone. She has no strings to whatever person, not even me. And I think that's great. I never stepped into all this because I was her husband. I am way too self-willed to do such a thing. I stepped into it because matter art silently crept under my skin and from there began to squeeze my throat ever so softly but also ever so unavoidable. I began to understand that matter art represented something the world had not yet seen and I began to understand that it was too complex, too paradoxical, too nonsensical profound to be left to the world of even the brightest of art lovers. So I took off explaining the world what, in fact, is inexplicable. Great art is all about ambition. Not the ambition to sweep your audience off its feet because you presented something spectacular, but the ambition to share something most extraordinary with it, in the grandest of ways. To merely stun your audience is the bleakest of ambitions. Then you produce art that is rooted in the freak show. I'm very sure that there has never been an ambition in the arts as big as the ambition that has led to meta art. But what makes meta art meta art is the paradoxical fact that this ultimately huge ambition finds its expression in the humblest of means. And I think that this says something very essential about art in particular and life in general.